Silence! Oh, it's time! It's time! It's time for another episode of the Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. Can you dig it, dig it sucker? Grab a six pack, sit back, and prepare to laugh. It's Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. Podcast. Grab a six pack, sit back, and prepare to laugh. It's Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. Podcast. Grab a six pack, sit back, and prepare to laugh. It's Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. Podcast. Grab a six pack, sit back, and prepare to laugh. It's Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. Podcast. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 369 of the Drunk Dashers Podcast. I'm your host, Zach Tyler, and joining me, the man, the myth, the legend himself, Sir Colonel Gabe. Jesus Christ, man, I've been playing so much Xbox stuff that I my head is literally freaking spinning. <laughs> That's how things have been going. Did, did, did the X truly give it to you? <laughs> Maybe not to that extent, but at the same time, oh my god, I have played so much freaking Halo. It is really scary how... Not only had I went through the whole Master Chief collection in and of itself in about two weeks, but, uh, oh god, I went through both Halo 4 and Halo 5, Guardians. Wow, okay. <laughs> Get, getting ready for oh, not, not just that, though, but uh, I think, and I'm not too certain that I actually beat Skate 3. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh, oh, that's part of the reason why I stayed up until like about three something this morning and stuff, like playing on with that uh, freaking new Xbox controller I got. <laughs> but yeah, I think you showed me that thing for you. Yeah, it, it is know. freaking sexy. I love it. What is it? Is it the uh, was it yeah, the it's the Elite, Elite Series Two. For those wanting to know, it is a premium controller from Microsoft. It definitely. Honestly, if, if I feel like it lives up to the hype of it, it's USB C, it's chargeable, has interchangeable buttons. So far, I like it. <laughs> but yeah. there's more than just gaming stuff happening in my life. I found another job, so I'm happy about that. Nice. <laughs> oh, everybody. yeah. Thank you. I know this world that we're living in right now, the whole COVID stuff, has been really strange and really weird. But at the same time, I'm glad to have some bit of normalcy. I got out of my last job place because, quite essentially, it was getting too stressful. On top of, on top of other personal reasons that I can't discuss, because well, that's corporate business, and I really don't want the, uh, huh, the yeah. job company to get after me on social media. Yeah, that'd be a bad time. Uh, but other than that, this has been a fairly nice week, and I hope this is going to be the beginning of another good week. <laughs> But how have you been doing, Tyler? Uh, I'm an all right, you know. I've uh, been in, you know, it's working. Had a nice little uh, three day weekend here. Well, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. So that was, say, Sunday is recording. So it was nice having, uh, you know, weekend kind of chill a little bit. It's been relaxing. Got nice. a lot of gaming in. Uh, you know, been an emotional wreck Aww. this week playing. Oh, you know, that's like, right. So. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's been an emotional wreck? It's what? Been, <laughs> it almost says yeah. the last of us. Like, it's oh, been, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's been, it's been, uh, it's been rough, uh, but uh, yeah, no, I'm doing okay. Nothing too too exciting going on with me otherwise, but uh, you know, it's clanging and banging as yeah. always, you know, Gables, it's just yeah. as we do, as we fucking do, you know. Um, but yeah, um, I don't know. I guess we should jump into what we've been. Uh, should we do what we've been playing first, or what? What? what uh, Let's go ahead and first. get the news out of the way. I like doing that. Okay. Yeah, me too. Uh, so we're gonna start off with uh, Crash Bandicoot. Uh, it's about time uh, that we we now it, it leaked right before we recorded. I think it was last yeah. time we recorded, and uh, that they were gonna have the trailer for it um, on Mon- Monday morning. Came out. Like, we already knew the title and everything like that. But it's coming out October second. We both seen the trailer. Um, what did you think when you when you saw? I the really trailer? liked the trailer. I really liked the introduction. The gameplay of it looks pretty solid. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I wasn't expecting too much from the Crash Reveal trailer, but at the same time, once I did see it, it felt more inclined to the series. I'll tell you what, I I come into the series only playing through Crash 4, like, uh, w- no, Crash 3 Warped. Excuse me, that was on the PS1 mm. all those years ago. I played a little bit of the trilogy, the Insane Trilogy, 
I have it digitally. I've been meaning to go back and play them. But uh, from the job that that trilogy did, that remaster and stuff, and then looking at this whole new experience, I'm excited. That looks pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I, I thought so too. Um, I came in, you know, like I kind of the same way. I played a little bit of one back in the day, but my, I mostly played Warped over and over again because I remember I'd go over to my cousin's mm-hmm. house all the time and I'd go over there and like they didn't have a memory card. Oh, shit. And so I'd always like replay the first, like, I'd always play like like probably the first third of the game and then we leave or something like that and like, I'd come back, play the first third of the game again. And finally, uh, I think they I borrowed it from where I got a cheap copy like years later. And oh, I my God. It, but uh, I'll tell you what. Yeah. I, I have a fun so, story uh, in regards to uh, mm-hmm. Crash 3 Warped. When I played that game on the PlayStation originally, there I bought it used back around 2007, 2008. I tried playing it through on the PS3 at the time, and there was the last motorcycle section in that entire game. Mm. I could not get past because the game would freeze in that potential. <laughs> and so I had to use a fucking Game Shark in order to get past and skip that level so I can get <laughs> through the entirety of the rest of the game. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I remember actually, I remember uh, I bought it on the, they had like the PS, the PlayStation 1 games on PS3. I remember I bought it, I think, yeah, I bought it on there digitally. And I, I played through it. I remember it was only like seven bucks. I played through a good chunk of that too. Well, that I'll tell you what, again. fun thing, um, fun fact. Those downloadable games, you can only play through them on the PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation Portable. For some odd reason, the Crash Bandicoot trilogy, those original PS1 titles and the original Spyro games, you cannot download them on the Vita to play. I have oh, wow. no idea why, but... Maybe it's an uh, You thing? know, I'm not sure. To be perfectly honest, the only way I could play certain PSP games that I had downloadable or even certain PlayStation games is, what, is if I connected the Vita to the PS3 at the time that I had it and transfer them from PS3 to Vita. It was so freaking weird. Hmm. Uh, Sony's weird that way, though. Too, Agreed. So I can see that. Like this sounds normal. This seems normal, but it's <laughs> the most asinine thing. But um, yeah, I, I, I remember I, I jumped in and played uh, Crash Bandicoot. That was one of the first games that like I bought like full on like for you know first week of like bought digitally. Like I used to like I was always like all physical then. And then, like, this is one of the games that could start converting me over to digital. But anyways, I remember pl- picking up, picking up, and playing the the Insane Trilogy, and I, I remember I got into uh, into it quite a bit there for that weekend. But then I kept getting like stuck at these points where I feel like like the jump mechanic, like the timing was just a little mm-hmm. bit off. And like I, I this was set in the one level I, I got stuck on years and years ago. And then like Courtney used to play back in the day too, so like six months ago we re-downloaded it and we started playing over again. Flew pretty much through everything got to that same level and just got stuck there it's been like an hour trying to beat this level and just couldn't do it right it's like we just couldn't figure out like the timing of like the uh not um, it was like you had a spring off of stuff we couldn't get that down um but uh, yeah i know like whether or not though it was, it was great like I, I played through like a good chunk of warped on there and then that was the main reason like i pretty much i wanted to play it and it was only like 40 bucks too when it came out wasn't it? um yes it was both that and the spyro trilogy yeah. so, were 40 bucks yeah and this is being made by the people Ooh, in Spyro too. I forgot to mention that. Uh, and I heard, I heard that was good. I mean, I was never a Spyro guy. Even back in the day, when I played Spyro. I'm like, I don't like this. But, yeah. Um, uh, I they did seem like everything we heard. They did a really good job. So that's awesome to hear. Um, so I, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm really excited about seeing this. I, I it's I'm, it's awesome to see it's coming so soon. I feel like this is kind of that kind of this is like a game though that should come out. You know, five, six months after it's announced. This isn't something you show off for multiple years. Uh. This isn't a medieval thing. <laughs> like when medieval was like announced like oh, two Jesus. years before it came out. <laughs> That's um, true. And, but uh, yeah, and then when it finally came out, I was like, "Hey, next week medieval comes out." Um, but my my only thing issue was with it was I went. I'm like, "Oh, I'm, I'm buying this day one. This game looks fantastic." And then seeing it was sixty bucks. That's like the one <laughs> thing I'm like a little hesitant on. I gotta admit, is the price point. I mean, if it comes out and it's, I, I'm gonna wait now. Uh, I was gonna like go pre order on the PS4 immediately, um, but I'm gonna wait. And see what uh, um, what the reviews are like when it comes out, um, and hopefully people love it because I would love to play Crash again. You know, it'd be nice to have uh, a, a, a platformer from our childhood, other than Mario and like Nintendo ones, right? Make a comeback, you know, and like a real comeback, and not just get like a, a remaster of the old games, uh, like we're seeing Ratchet and Clank is coming back and all that. So 
Even though I guess that was like teenager, but still, I mean, it'd be cool to see shit like that come back. Um, I don't know, but uh, yeah, I can't. I hope. I hope to God this is it's great because uh, it'd be it'd be cool to have. Uh, but moving on, Gables, to your uh, most anticipated game for <laughs> ever, Pokemon Unite. Uh, uh. Some Pokemon had their uh, what was it, what was it called? The Pokemon, not direct, but like they had like an event, like a Pokemon event yeah. last week, and it was and like they showed off of like randomly just like show up like Pokemon Smile and then a bunch of weird shit and then randomly just drop new Pokemon Snap mm-hmm. on us and then like hey by the way next week we're, we have this big thing we're gonna talk about it's like oh shit so like 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 us like everybody does with like anything when there's an announcement coming we all oh, go crazy yeah. with it especially with like Pokemon it's like wait you did an event this week and you have another one next week that's only gonna talk about one thing that's gotta be you know Pokemon Let's Go Johto or the next big uh, next gen nine or something like the next big thing or something and it's it's a goddamn moba cables it's a free to play oh, i'm sorry free to start <laughs> moba uh you could be cross-played on on your on androids iphones um tablets and your switch uh what i mean we're not i don't i've never played a moba so i can't say i'm not a moba guy it just doesn't look really all that fun to me uh, mostly because I'm almost I'm not really a super like a competitive guy. First stuff, oh my god, fireworks going off now too, hooray! Um, but I don't know, Gables. What, you're the poke. You're obviously a way bigger Pokemon fan than I. But what did you think when when you saw? I this? felt like that this was an extension from the uh, the announcement stuff from last week. I don't get why this had to have been a separate event just for the game they were unveiling. I mean, yeah, that's that's all nice and good, you know. This is a free to play. Uh, let's just be perfectly honest with what it is. It's a free-to-play game, but essentially. It's a Pokemon MOBA game. Yeah. I mean, that's that's nice yeah. in its appeal, and it's nice how quintessentially this is the game that Nintendo and Tencent, the big old Chinese company, went through and uh, co-developed in regards to, you know, for their own stuff, for mobile stuff. I kind of find it interesting how Nintendo is saying now they are going away from cell phones, but yet they're going away from the mobile market in general. And then all of a sudden you get one of the biggest yeah. <laughs> franchises that they own releasing the game that, uh, when essentially they've been in works now for at least a couple of years, this Pokemon mobile game. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, I really could not care less for this game. Honestly, honestly, the God, I can't. I mean, I understand the appeal of games like League of Legends and Dota 2 in that regards. They're big competitive stuff. People love downloading the various characters that they want to play as. They love going through all sorts of brilliant strategies and stuff. I have friends that personally love playing League of Legends. But honestly, this was a step down in regards to... God, not just being underwhelming, but quintessentially, this was an entirely unnecessary. This was entirely unnecessary. It kind of felt like to me that that Tencent probably went ahead and scheduled with Nintendo to have their game that they've co-created front and center yeah. with their own separate announcement because it was super weird. I'll be perfectly mm-hmm. honest with you. If that would have been part of the thing from last week, honestly, we would not have given too much of a fuck about it. I mean, yes, there will still be people that would have complained that there was no Gen 4 remakes or no Let's Go Johto or whatever the hell. But even if they said, worked in a way where that Pokemon mobile game was front and center and then all of a sudden the Pokemon Cafe or whatever the hell type of things that they were doing and then <laughs> yeah. have that uh, new Pokemon Snap at the end, people would have been happy just knowing that we are getting a new Pokemon Snap game Maybe some even more so than whatever the hell else you went through and unveiled. It, I do not understand fully why this game was presented like it was. The game in and of itself quintessentially is a victim of circumstances. Where I feel the game in and of itself looks alright. However, because Nintendo hyped it up the Pokemon company hyped it up. It's like, hey, you want to hear more Pokemon stuff? Tune in next week. We got a big project in the works. And, of course, what are the fans going to be thinking of? They're going to be thinking that it's an, another mainline Pokemon game or a remake or this or that. Yeah. It's the same thing that happened with Microsoft in regards to the whole next-gen gameplay at least about a month and a half ago. Uh, third the third-party. third-party stuff. Yeah, the third-party event. 
It's the yeah. same thing. It's the same hype up, and it's also the same letdown. And this was a colossal letdown. I'm not going to beat any bushes in regards to it. But uh, kind of makes you wonder right at the moment is if they are going to go through and release, say, potentially another Pokemon game in the regards of next year or whatsoever. I kind of wonder if they just had the whole expansion stuff for Sword and Shield focused just for this year to try to, you know, put off, like, uh, say, a remaster of Diamond and Pearl or whatever the hell over the next year and a half. I mean, I'm, I'm just grasping at straws now, but, yeah, this was not a good presentation. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I feel like the uh, we had that direct in, like, what was it, January, I want to say, for the Pokemon DLC. And I feel like that when they announced the DLC and everything, that was, like, them basically saying, like, we're not making, when they announced this, the second pack's coming out in the fall, like, that's their, them saying, yeah, we don't have another big $60 title yeah. for Dubai. I was thinking there might be, like, they, I know they had, like, that one Pokemon game that came out back in March, the dungeon, Mystery Dungeon or whatever. But um, I, I'm i like, okay, I figured maybe they have something smaller or uh, you know, around maybe summertime or fall that will keep interest peak because the, the Sword and Shield thing, like, DLC, like, is pretty much widely known as, like, it's not a big, like, money, it's not a big, like, seller for the most part. Like, only the hardcore fans are really going to jump back into right. it, which, I mean, that's important to have, but, um, you know, it's not going to, like, what, I think Sword and Shield's already sold, like, 17 million. Yeah, and you, it's sold a lot, I yes. mean, if you get, you're, say, you know, you get a third of that, it's still 6 million, that's a lot. At thirty dollars a pop, but it's not going to be. You're not. You probably could have released in a big six star title this year and got and got you know, 13, 14 million at six at sixty bucks a pop. You know, um, but maybe there's just something ready. Maybe they're working on something else. But I, I, you know, I thought maybe the new Pokemon Snap is something that comes out this year. Well, that's I think about hopefully. That. I mean, that would like, be nice. I, I, it doesn't sound like it because they said it's now in development, which usually when they say that, I mean, you look at like what oh, they did that boy. with. Uh, with Pokemon a few years ago, with Sword and Shield a few years ago, when they announced we're developing one that took two years to come out. Uh, Metroid Prime 4, we haven't seen since. Bayonetta 3, we haven't heard from since. And that was like, both of those were over oh three years gosh, ago yeah. at this point. There are definitely um, a lot of Nintendo games we have not heard more of yet, and they were unveiled way too early. And I feel like new Pokemon Snap, yeah. though I want that game to release sometime by the end of this year because of how much of a drought there is in terms of uh, major first-party games for Nintendo Switch. At the same time, it kind of feels like to me that the whole unveiling for New Pokemon Snap was in direct correlation with how pissed off the fan base got with Sword and Shield. <laughs> uh, it could have been. Um, you know, you, I mean, I, I, there's a lot of correlations that I think that with like, look at Skate 4 being announced oh, last week as yeah. well, where it's like, it's like you guys announced that people are upset because they announced too early, but it's like, Okay, well, we want you guys to stop clamoring the, for it, kind of thing. It's like, hey, we, you're I getting feel what like you the want. only way now. Shut I really up and wait. I believe that the reason why they did that is because of the uh, Activision with the whole Tony Hawk One and Two remake. Yeah, I mean potentially. I mean that, but that, I, I don't know if that's something they did in the last month when what the Tony Hawk was or was it even a month ago. I think yeah. it was sometime this month actually. I don't. know. Time is a flat circle now. No you shit. could today is like March, one hundred and fifty two, <laughs> uh, one hundred fifty second. Um, but it, I guess that rumor's been out for a long time, so maybe sometime in the last six months, a year or so, maybe they put that deal together. But, you know, people were complaining, like I was saying, like, uh, nah, this game, you guys announced it way too early, but it's like, okay, you guys have been bitching about this for, I don't want to say I don't say bitching, but, like, you guys have been clamoring for this since, like, what, 2011? They've been bitching and for, it's like, like, now we're making it, we're just years, telling you. Dude. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, you know, like, I'm happy for those people that got it, but it's like, now it's like, it's but it's like, most well, people complain that they announced too early kind of thing. Well, um it's kind of dumb because it's like, I mean, it sucked. That was like kind of a, a lackluster way maybe to end that EA play last week, mainly because I think a lot of it was because I'm not a skate guy. And I feel like a lot of that, that presentation was just like, Hey, here's games that are like, we are still like early in development. Like we got, here's apex, here's Sims and everything. All these other games are coming three years. from now. <laughs> And, uh, um, <So> true. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, um, I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I am obviously a Pokemon Snap fanboy. Like, I, if they put that on the Switch right now, I would buy that at Harvey. Even if it was twenty bucks, thirty bucks, forty. I'd, I'd fucking pay for it and buy it and play through it again. I love that game, uh, and I am incredibly excited for a new Pokemon Snap. I have all the faith in the world that I'll be good as long as it's not some fucking. It's I guess they said for, for, for Switch. So I was gonna say as long as it's not some like 
uh, Pokemon Go type of thing with like the AR and all that shit. But um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, just <sighs> anyways, going back to Pokemon Unite, it's like we got off from complete tangent there. Um, with, with Pokemon Unite, it's just yeah, like like you, every, I, you pretty much said everything I wanted to say. Where it's like I, you know, now Tencent's working on. They're a big company, so it's probably like they want this to be their own thing. Like you said, like they like this. If this would have been like a five minute part of life, if it would have been a 16, 17 minute event last week and this was a part of it, like Pokemon smile, like, all right, yeah, that's cool. Ha, ha. Oh shit. New Pokemon snap. All right. Fuck. Yeah. I mean, I guess I could see it though, where it's like, they don't want that again. Like everybody's gonna talk about new, new, new Pokemon snap and they're going to completely forget about no Pokemon shit. Unite. So I guess talking, you know, as I talk about it, like maybe, maybe like even Pokemon the company themselves like thought like, well, this is going to be, if this is a big thing for them and they want to, you know, get some legs behind it. It's like they want to make this own separate thing. But like you said, th- if this was announced last week with everything else, it would be like, okay, whatever. You know, well, this we don't know. Like everything, you can expect everything and nothing from the, from these Pokemon events. Just like last year when they announced Pokemon shirts. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> and the poke the Pokemon Plus uh, what was it Pokemon oh Plus God. Plus. You know, shit like that. Um, so like you can, you never know what the fuck you're gonna get these goddamn things. And people advertising the, the new Godzilla movie that came out last year. Um, <laughs> but that still makes me laugh in the middle of everything. It's so Pokemon st- all it's of a sudden they thing. Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what the fuck? Like, why did you mention no, the new Godzilla movie? And it wasn't even that I good. Know. We'll um, our but uh, prime attraction for this Pokemon conference: the introduction of our classic <laughs> movie hero, Godzilla. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The newest Pokemon, Godzilla. Oh God! What? What if they just like Pokemon Company bought the the rights to Godzilla and just put all of them in uh, the Pokemon? Uh, I could do one better, dude. How about they bought the freaking licensing for like the T the TCM like like monsters, the Turner Movie Classic monsters? You know, like the fucking oh, King Kong, geez. the Mummy, and all this other shit. Yeah, <laughs> I would be all in for that. I'm surprised they haven't just done it already and just ripped them off. Uh, they should just do it. Oh my God. I'm only for that. That sounds like a way better Pokemon oh, no than I've got. Um, <laughs> I'd be cool with that. Uh, but I, I don't know. It's just this thing looks stupid. Um, never gonna play it. Um, we, it seems like we get like one or two of these every year. I think they like. There's a lot of free to start, free to play, whatever Pokemon yeah, games there out are. there now. Like they announced that one last year, the weird like island one. Uh, I, I played it for like an hour uh, on Switch. Uh, like you know, yeah, Pokemon Go. You got the Pokemon like match three game. You got the, oh, the Pokemon, whole Pokemon uh, thing that you played along with a lot of it. Yeah. Oh, God, so stu- that fucking game, man. I put like fi- put like fifty dollars in that game. Like this is stupid. Why am I oh, playing you know, this? I didn't go down that rabbit hole, dude. Well, I played what I played. And I yeah, it was. <laughs> it was fun for a while. And what's the oh, fuck? What's the Pokemon? Picross. Yeah. Then well, there's Picross. Oh, yeah. the Pokemon Picross. I got really hooked on that one too for a while. And that was that was a bad time. That was a bad time in my life. Okay, let's just talk about that. <laughs> Uh, 20, 2015 was a weird oh, year. Um, but um, not as weird as 2020, <laughs> but it's a weird year. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. It's just, like you said, everything you said is like, it's true. It's like, this would have been fine if it was a, if mixed in. But also, you know, with the Tencent behind it, like, they're a big company but in China. They they own a lot. Like, I think they own Respawn uh, now as well. Like, uh, people that make Titanfall and Star Wars and shit. So, like, they they and like I think they're part owners of like uh, Epic and sh- like they own a lot of big shit, um, so I'm, I'm sure if what they s- pretty much said on this ha- had to go for a little bit, uh, but yeah I, it just this looked dumb looked bad it looked like a low just a low budget I mean it's free to play but it's just look like a low budget you know MOBA game but I, th- I think the point is it's gonna it's gonna appeal to kids which is what they're going for so if that's what the market is I'm sure they're gonna fucking kill it on that but uh, yeah fuck man what a Goddamn, the heartbreaker that was. I was like, think, you know, Pokemon Johto. Like, what if we got a new Pokemon Puzzle League? That oh, would yeah, be badass, Fuck man, that game was badass. I would fucking love a new Pokemon Puzzle League. Just remake the, the 64 version. I, think I have the Game Boy Color version. I, I freaking just was bought the N64 Puzzle version of Pokemon Puzzle League a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. <laughs> Fuck yeah, I'm coming over. We're, we're gonna play. Oh my god, it's so awesome though. Hold on. That game is badass. That was a great game. I played the shit out of that fucking thing. G- give me the Pokemon trading card company. Um, or the Pokemon oh, yeah, trading no card game, that. not the company. The game. I don't want the whole company. The just card the game. game. Yeah, actually, no. I'll give me the company. I'll just sell it for <laughs> billions of dollars. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Ah, fuck. It's just. God damn it. 
I now I just want Pokemon trade card game. I remember I played the shit out of that one on 3DS when they mm. released it on there. Game's great. It's still great. It still holds up. Uh, and speaking of like great card games, where the goddamn was the new fucking Yu-Gi-Oh! The game Yu-Gi-Oh! game actually released on the freaking Switch not that long ago. Yeah, but that's just the 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 PS4 Xbox version. That's we got true, in but they did upgrade it in terms of like the whole Link monsters and all the other stuff that uh, has been going through. But uh, uh, there, I, I just want, it really I, hasn't been. I just want a, like, I a new one. I just want a new one. It was, that game was fucking. That was like the perfect Yu Gi Oh game to play in. For, like for I will for me admit, as an adult. like just it was definitely the best Yu Gi Oh game I have played since Nightmare Troubadour on the DS. That mm. was a fun game. I love the Nightmare Troubadour. Yeah. But uh, in regards to the whole, like, a new Yu-Gi-Oh, like, Legacy of the Duelist type of stuff on the PS4, the Xbox One stuff, yeah, that was a fun time. It really was a fun time. Yeah. Sorry, you dropped out there yeah, for Yeah, I heard that. So. <laughs> okay. Oh, shit, here we go. I don't know. Can we should, can we just rag on bad Yu-Gi-Oh games? For a <laughs> All right, that sounds like a. I just want to say first off, f- fuck Pokemon Duelist Kingdom on PlayStation One. Wait, Pokemon Duelist Kingdom? <laughs> Was that our? You said I say Pokemon? Pokemon Yu-Gi-Oh Duel, Duelist Kingdom. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Let me tell you something. Yu-Gi-Oh Forbidden Memories in the PlayStation One. That Forbidden Memories. Yeah, that's what Dude, it was. I played that game. I got all the way to the final enemy of that game, Rashif. I fucking had to use a game card. Holy shit. A game shark. Why? Because it doesn't tell you this, but you could insert certain card numbers and certain card things to get some of the more, most powerful cards in the entire game. Well, nope. guess what? This fucking dude, he can summon the entire Gate Guardian, which is like a freaking 30, like 3,000 something rather like... Uh, it has to be like a high attack monster, right? It has one of the highest attacks in the goddamn game. And uh, without fusing or everything else like that. Now, granted, I liked playing like uh, Forbidden Memories because, yeah, it was different. The whole aspect of the whole attributes and everything else of what's weak and what's strong against something, that was all right, I guess. But, oh, my God, the difficulty was fucking atrocious. Really atrocious. But if you really want to talk about yeah. bad Yu-Gi-Oh games... Boy, there was at least a couple that I remember. Duels of the Roses. Duels of the Roses. I played a little bit of. I never beat that game. Oh, oh that, that was the weird chess one, wasn't um, it? Like you're on a chessboard. I think it was like Colise- maybe Yu Gi Oh Coliseum or something like that. There was there was two Yu Gi Oh games for the PlayStation Two that I remember. And uh, oh my god, Duels of the Roses was one, and then there was another one like a capsule fucking monster game or whatever the hell it was the second one was hard as balls but uh hmm. i may be misremembering something <laughs> thank god where's, where's jake when you i don't know the, i swear <laughs> forbidden memories being like yeah like you said it was like just like meeting like the first like three guys and there was like no like if you lost you had to go all the way back to the i'll game. tell you what kind of shit there was that but uh the game boy advance had a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh games because it's it's one oh, of the fuck yeah. it was one of the most popular mobile games hell playing the card game on a go and stuff like that it was really appealing that's perfect i played through at least three or four separate Yu Gi Oh games on the game boy advance back in the day sacred cards rashif of destruction mm-hmm. world tournament 2004 and i want to say world tournament 2005 i want to say i played through all the world champion ones and then i was up for not not 2007 but uh I remember Sacred Cards was badass. Sacred Cards was uh, fine, actually. Yeah, that was, I, I enjoyed that. Was, it, was that the one that didn't follow, that didn't follow the rules of... It followed the rules like, of Battle City, and then the sequel to it, Rashid the Destruction, was more of that, but yet a little bit more difficult in regards. It was an original story, obviously. It was oh, something okay. not inside the anime, not inside the thing at the time. I liked Sacred yeah. Cards. I played through it a few times because, well, I liked the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime back then a lot. But... Uh, no, you had a more traditional one with 2004, which that was fine. The one that was 2005, however, pissed me the fuck off because every single in-game week, there will be a new ban list, and you had to adjust your list every single time. Uh. Your deck, you had to adjust it every single time because there would be cards that you would spend your money on, in-game money on, and all of a sudden you had to switch it out with another fucking card. So you can't use your Monster Born one week, but you can the other week, and then all of a sudden some of the best cards in the game you couldn't hardly get because you had to grind over and over. 
while doing that shit. And uh, I don't know if I did beat that game or not. If I did, and holy shit, I must have had a lot more patience than I thought. But uh, <laughs> this is 17-year-old me as opposed to 32-year-old me where it's like, 32-year-old me will look at that game and like, oh, no, this is a piece of shit. I'm not going to play this. And all of a sudden, 17-year-old me is like, hey, this is my one game I get this in the next couple months. I'm going to do this shit. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like me with, like, False Bound Kingdom. Like, I, like, made that, myself like that game. That like is times. the game I <laughs> wish I had bought for the GameCube because that looked like it was the most appealing one out of the whole console Yu-Gi-Oh! games at the time. <laughs> oh, it definitely. It, it definitely was. But it... It still was not a weird. It was still not a very good right. game. Like, it's like I just want to play the fucking Yu Gi Oh. Like, what no the fuck shit. is this shit? Back but, when the Yu Gi Oh games weren't even God, like they... fucking card game, it was just some weird like uh, yeah board game shit. <laughs> Although like Dungeon Dungeon Dice Monsters secretly badass game. But it was freaking. But it was fucking badass hard game. as hell though. <laughs> oh, it was, but it was good. I fuck. I I, I played the fucking <laughs> shit out of that goddamn game. That game was so good. God damn! Just give me a. Give me a goddamn Yu-Gi-Oh game. Give me a Dungeon Dice Monsters one and a new fucking Yu-Gi-Oh card game. Like it, it, it seems so easy. It does. You know, to like to make these games, but they like make it Dude, unnecessarily you, hard. You should like really, the Yu-Gi-Oh. What was you that should really check online because there have been fans that have recreated the Dungeon Dice Monster stuff and try to add their own rules and everything else oh, to it, fuck. dude. Oh, that sounds. No, oh, sounds. <laughs> really bad. I don't like that. Like there was like that Yu-Gi-Oh Millennium Duels they released like. Oh, way God. back in like I remember like one of the first episodes we ever did started off with me rage quitting a fucking episode uh, a, a game because like it was so fucking hard. decades like, every time plus probably. like I'd get to the same spot it was a it was like this the same thing would happen every turn like three turns in he would get three he get five monsters on the goddamn field and I'd all have twenty five hundred uh, attack points and it was like, fuck this game I remember because it was Yu Gi Oh decades duel plus and it was. The whole yeah. revolving around a Yu-Gi-Oh! 5 Ds at the time, and that whole structure of it—it it was incredibly hard to get cards in that game because you had to grind over and over and over. And so when Legacy: of The Duelist came out for PS4 and Xbox One, that was quintessentially that game outclassed anything that damn previous game did because you had cards you can get easy. You could get freaking card packs in the middle of the game after you completed each stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that was like, it would take me hours just to oh beat God. one person. Did you know there was a fucking Yu-Gi-Oh! Xbox Yes, there game? was. I remember that. Dawn of, Dawn the Dawn of, of Destiny. Destiny. And to be perfectly honest with you, it was the game that had the Winged Dragon of Raw, I believe, inside the game. Mm. And I believe the Duelist of Roses, oh, I oh. want to say, had a couple of various monsters. I don't know if it had Obelisk, but I think, I don't know. I think the Xbox game was the only one that actually had the Winged Dragon Raw or any one of the God Monsters. Now that I think about it. Yeah, it has a wing. It has uh, um, Dawn of Destiny comes packaged with three. Well, it comes with three cards. Um, comes with all three of the uh, uh, the God the God oh. Monsters as oh, well. Oh no! So shit. it had to. Yeah, it must oh. have. But the Winged Dragon Raw could not be used in the official like the the card, the real card itself. The brick and mortar card. Yeah. Be used in the... Yeah, they tried to, <laughs> they tried to release it in the card game with uh, redone text and stuff, but uh, it, no, nobody hardly ever uses the god cards inside of competitive play for Yu-Gi-Oh. No, no. I mean, it's fun to use in the game, but it's, right, like, in, like the actual yeah, video game. I agree with you. It's like it's actually like it's it's like not really the smart move to do, like the, the try to get three monsters on the field to. Yeah, sacrifice. for the field advantage and stuff, but uh, the most thing. Honestly, the most important part is the hand advantage you got over somebody, and uh, the less resources you have inside of your hand, the less likely your opponent's going to draw something that's going to immediately uh, take out all your life points or deck out. Yeah. You know. It, so, oh wow, I'm reading about I'm reading about okay. the Xbox One. Uh, they they actually had a four four uh, player uh, online. They had mode. a four player. You, you all played against Wow. Shadow. It, it, does any other Yu-Gi-Oh game have the four player? I know, like I know you could do team battles and like the new one, but I don't remember. That you can you do all? I'll four tell you each what. Other? Not in America, you couldn't do in regards to more Yu-Gi-Oh games like that. I believe I I'm not too sure. I this is the first I've heard about online duels throughout that Xbox game. I heard in Japan with uh, you remember the whole ad hoc thing for uh, PSP in that regards. Yeah. There was a Yu-Gi-Oh! GX yeah. game on PSP that uh, people 
could do ad hoc and stuff and do online stuff to where they could play against one another. Like, four people duels, because it was like a tag duel format in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX with all the elemental hero monsters and all this other stuff. Which, you know, it sounds interesting and it sounds interesting in retrospect. But, uh, I don't know, it's just kind of fascinating to me. It just does sound pretty fascinating. Yeah. I remember, like, doing that shit, like, with my oh, yeah. friends. Oh, yeah. It's like, there was, you know, there were three of us, and it's like, well, I guess we should, like, we'd all play against each other and stuff, but, um, it, it always kind of turned into, a, like, a, a bitch fest, because it was, like, we, two people always take oh, yeah. one. So, it was, like, it, it would always lose its fun. But, um, yeah, let's, let's... I don't know why we got that's a weird tangent to get on. We know what Pokemon it le- leads to Yu Gi Oh! Well, you're the one that brought up the Yu Gi Oh! stuff. <laughs> I know I did. Th- that comes from know, you, but... coming, from the, coming from the times and stuff that Jake and I would talk ad nauseum about Yu Gi Oh! and you would be like over there oh in the corner going, God. <laughs> Yeah. You, well, because it'd be like a 30 minute conversation. You guys like deep God. dive into like, like the freaking. Like, I, because I, I, you know, I, I stopped watching the show. I, I watched like the first three seasons and like. I fell off, like, you know, you know, two thousand four, two thousand five, and it's just like you got. I don't think I don't know anything about anything after that. Dude, after that. you know, it should call into a uh, all full circle that we just stop talking. If we just start talking about John Cena. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, uh, that's what I should have done. That should have been like that's like his like trigger thing. It's just like, <laughs> and we get off. He 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 get off target and then oh. like, cool. All right, I, I took we 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 got the reins back to the show. Oh my lord. <laughs> So there are other topics in the news. <laughs> there is. We do have a couple other topics to talk about. Holy shit, that was weird. Um, so, uh, uh, Square Enix had uh, what they called the Avengers War Table, uh, where it showed off. It's like I don't want to say a half an hour or so of uh, some gameplay and some details about the new uh, Marvel's Avengers games coming out on September fourth. Uh, I don't know. Did you get a chance? To watch I didn't any really of watch games? any of the gameplay in regards to it. I heard some. I read some impressions of it, which there weren't too many people that were quite happy with the gameplay of it still kind of looks sort of boring to them but uh as far as game concepts and stuff like that i really haven't seen too much of it yeah so i i watched about half of it and i like you i went and read uh, about some of their stuff i showed off um i remember like a while back i heard on the podcast someone was saying like like they the things they were hearing like from game testers and stuff was like the game technically is fine and everything's great about it, but it's not fun to play. And it's like watching, like there's like an eight minute chunk where you play a store and you're watching that. And I'm like, wow, like everything. Yeah, no, that this is not look fun. To, like it looks great. It looks like, it kind of looks like Marvel Ultimate Alliance three with a big budget kind of thing where it's like, it's a fun hack and slash kind of game, but it's not a great, like, uh, um, games as a service game. Right. And it's like, you, you sit there and watch it. Like you don't like, you're sitting there watching it. Like you don't feel like, the, the shots are connecting you don't know, like it looks bad i mean it looks badass because it's store right marvel, of course like, and marvel is like well, probably one of the bigger ips out there right now um but it's like you sit there and watch this and like it, there it looks everything looks like destiny like it looks like the kind of like even the, the style a little bit like you look at like the the map you look at, like because the, the war table is like basically where you go to you know like when you pick your planet and shit like that in between destiny missions and stuff like that's what the like even the war table looks like when you're like it looks like a fucking you know destiny map um it just and you look at like the uh the skill trees and all like the main menus like looks like a destiny type of thing i know that's not the first one to do it but it's probably one of the bigger ones that, like it was one of the first big ones out there uh to the main audience and mm. i was like look at them like this looks like a you know like a an action uh version of that of you know third person action game of destiny and it's just like this does not look fun that, like it, it was like eight minutes and i was that bored does after, not like, sound fun at all like, <laughs> yeah because like I'm, like you're just fighting like like destiny's kind of fun because like the, the biggest thing with destiny and i've said this was the first one and especially with the second one it's like destiny like the 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 most important part of the game itself and in every game pretty much is is uh exactly gameplay, especially games of service <laughs> and it's like they have like the gameplay in destiny is fantastic it's like the, the main issue with people is sometimes the content and the missions you do. Um, like where it's a little, um, you know, you just, it's very uh, repetitive. And like this, like watching this, I'm like, this looks like incredibly repetitive. Like this is like when you're, when you're like your first big mission you do in the game. And it's looks like you're fighting the same, like over and over again, the same wave of enemies. Every now and again, they throw a big guy at you with a horse field and you, you have to like go and do like a thunder move and you fucking destroy the shield, destroy the, the end of big enemy um 
yeah, I just like I, I wanted to like look forward to this game, and I, I, there's a lot of people out there like this. Like they admit like this game doesn't look great, but it's like it looks like it'd be a fun game to play with mm. your friends, which sounds great. Like I mean, I don't know. Like Marvel Ultimate Alliance, I remember playing that back in the day. It's not like a fucking masterpiece by any, any stretch of imagination, but it's like it, it's a fun game to play. I remember playing the, the shit out of that on my 360 when I first got it with with my friends, like four player co-op online, and that was like that was fucking awesome. I had a blast playing oh, that. Oh yeah. Uh, and I, I could I guess I could see that, but I'm just like. Everything about this game, like this, looks like it's gonna come out as a fucking dud. And maybe like going out, going into it and looking at it, like it's gonna be a dud. It's, it's probably maybe the best thing for it, where expectations have dropped considerably. Um, but I feel like this game came out and it like shown all this, and it didn't have um, the Avengers name or Marvel name on it. This probably wouldn't know what like I don't I, I don't even though it was Crystal Dynamics and it's Square Enix, like I don't think people would be all that really excited about it. I really don't. Um, and like I, I mean, all that being said, like I'm still like kind of interested in it. But honestly, like watching it, I was like I was more interested in like, oh yeah, Marvel Ultimate Alliance three came out last year. I should just play that. Yeah. Like, that's kind of pretty much what I was thinking the entire time watching. Was, like, like I wish that game was on like my PS4 and like I can and like I had more friends I can play it online with friends. That'd be badass. Yeah, but yeah, like I don't know. I just I don't I don't see the appeal of this game at all whatsoever. But uh, I mean, I know you're not you're not a big Marvel guy whatsoever. As far as like the movies, like you're not big into like all that. But uh, um, you you a little more you get a little more into like the games of service stuff than I do. Mm. Um, like I definitely get hooked on some here and there. But I know you've gotten into more of them. Like, do you, could you see yourself like jumping into one of these kind Absolutely of? Absolutely not. Only because, for one, there's nothing that really appealed to me in regards to the whole Marvel Avengers game in and of itself. I did not have a lot of good impressions when it was first unveiled, and from what people were saying from the initial unveiling for this week in terms of gameplay, that really did not improve anything in regards to what I thought. So, yeah, yeah, I do not want it. <laughs> yeah, this this sounds like Anthem kind of thing. Oh God. It's like instead of having buy like a big name like Bioware behind it, like a big dev, it's got a big IP on it kind of thing. But you know. And Crystal Amix is is, is, a, is a good company. I love the Tomb Raider games. The first two Tomb Raider, they made the first two. Uh, I love those games. So I don't know. I just I, I be, if this comes out and it's good, I'll be happy. Like I'll, I'll definitely be a gamer. I check out later. But the game of service thing is just really turn me off. But um, I'm jumping into our last topic here. Uh, this is uh from a uh, former Sony exec, uh, Sean Layden, who was he was pretty much like the face of all the E3 press conferences up until a couple years ago, and he left the company. After 32 years, um, and uh, he uh, he did an interview recently with VentureBeat, and it was kind of like the uh, talking about like shorter, like they're like may basically making games like games need to be shorter and cheaper to make. Like basically, it's not sustainable like what we're doing. And he's like, kinda, I'm gonna just kind of jump through some of like his quotes here, but like he's talked about like I would welcome a return to 12 to 15 hour games. Um, one a big one he did here was like the cost of creating games has increased. Um, some studios show that. Um, that price has gone up uh, two uh, double two times every every console generation. The price has gone up uh, is doubled for making a game, um, and, that, and, the, and that and the problem with that is the model is not sustainable. And then quote he said is uh, major AAA games in the current generation go anywhere from eighty to one hundred fifty million dollars or more to build, and that's before marketing. It's a huge front, uh, upfront cost extended over time and takes uh three or four or three three or four or five years to build a game while you're not getting any investment in return you just continue to pay into it looking for a big payoff at the end i don't think in the next generation you can uh take those numbers and multiply them by two and expect the, the industry to, to continue to grow hmm. uh, then he had one more quote i wanted to find here um he, he mentioned how like you know the price the price of games has stayed the same for about 13 years now uh it's like He's like, how can we look? How can we look at the end of the day? Is there another answer? Uh, instead of spending five years to make an 80-hour game, what does three years in a 15-hour game look like? Um, what are the costs around that? Um, so I don't know. What, what's your thoughts on that? Hmm. Well, honestly, this has been something that's been debated about in the gaming industry now for the past decade. In that regards, with the increasement, with the increasing price of development as regards to certain things being talked about, like uh, length of games, this and that. In my personal opinion, I feel like that uh, there needs to be both in regards to long games and short games. Honestly, there will still be, there definitely will still be games that are like 80 hours long that you're going to enjoy 
chipping away at for like weeks, maybe months on end. Hell, like say Persona 5 Royal, that's a game that I've been playing a lot of and I'm still around the 90 hour mark. I've taken a break from it. I've been playing other games, but at the same time, once I do get back into it, I definitely will finish it up. And the point being is, I feel like that we definitely do have a lot of smaller games in, some, in terms of the indie out like outlet and stuff, in terms of uh, other stuff. And to be perfectly honest with you, the reasoning why I, I believe we're hearing more talks in regards to, say, shorter games is because of how frequent and oversaturated the market is currently with, say, the live service type of games where it seems like your game never ends and game makers wanting to uh, convince other consumers to keep playing their games like weeks or months after it initially released. But uh, I feel like that there is room for more shorter games in and of itself. I feel like the uh, topic that Sean Layden, the former Sony boss, was talking about. It's a bunch of no shit because <laughs> we've known about the escalating costs of the AAA, the AAA gaming industry, how it's not sustainable for how that the whole mass majority of it. I mean, hell, we're seeing companies literally, companies like EA, Activision, even some of the ones like Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo just pour millions millions of dollars inside of uh, potential projects, potential games and stuff to make them all nice and pretty and running in 4K and all these random like 60, like 30 to 60 frames per second and this and that. That uh, now that we're getting, now that all of those experiences have came and went, quintessentially what they're telling and what I'm, what I am hearing is not so much of, hey, maybe there needs to be shorter games, but maybe there just needs to be less time in between releasing major games, quintessentially. That's how I'm interpreting it. So, like that, yeah. like that example of, say, three years, 15-hour game or whatsoever, or, or five games, 80-hour type of gameplay, like that other example was. <clears throat> I feel like I understand the business sense of what they're going to do, but I still feel like it's just going to tread on regardless. There's going to be major big budget games. There's going to be plenty of major stuff still going on. We may see some increase of shorter games from AAA publishers, but I think it's just mostly going to remain the same. But what did you th what did you think, Tyler? Um, I'm I'm with them as a fan because that's you know that's something I've talked about for really the last. There's pretty much the majority of this. this generation where it's like i miss you know I, I, there's so many games that like that i love so much that like got converted into open like i mean that's been a big issue really since gta came around where it's like everything became open yep. world and like, there's so many open world clubs and there's so many then they're turning like for stretch there, there's so many call of Duty. there's always everybody follows like the, the popular oh, yeah. thing but it's like you look at i mean ever since really the last 18 years it seems like everything's it's this guy it's like it's been a race to get bigger and no bigger. shit um it's a, and i mean there people, I'm, I'm, there's people out there I love it, but I mean, we saw that back in like the, you know, the not this past generation, but the one before that, the PS2 and Xbox, where it's like everything was open world. Like even like fucking Simpsons made an open world game. It's like everything had to be an open. Oh, world not just SpongeBob open world, open but they also game. had to had some sort of online component to it, even if it made sense or not. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean that was something that really turned into like last generation. But uh, you, I'm just saying like going back two generations ago, where it's like, it's like you saw that. It's like there was a, over, like you said back then there was oversaturation of things where it's like. It's like, I don't. This game doesn't need to be open world. You look at. There's been so many games that come out. Like, I look at like Mafia Three. That game's the story in that game is incredible. The characters in the game are incredible. But it's like, your game is not fun to play because like the, the, you didn't like you made this really great, um, you know, universe of characters and the storyline. But it's like, like the game it wasn't fun to play. And then if it would have been more linear, it would have been a, probably a game of the year, possibly a game people still talk about with like a lot of love behind it more so than we hear from today. Um, and that, I mean, that's been something I've been talking about forever. It's like, you, like I always talk about, like, last generation. It's like, everybody had, like, if you want to play online with your friends, like, everybody had, like, the same one or two games. Like, everybody had Call of Duty, and the majority of your friends had one yep. other game kind of thing, you know? And, like, this generation, it's been, like, and towards the end of last, but really this generation, it's like, every, like, few months, there's been, like, a big, you know, games of service game that comes out, or there's been a, 
uh, a big open world game or it's been like everything's be bigger and better than ever um which is definitely a market for that but it's just like it's not sustainable like he said it's not sustainable where like you hear all these games that come out it's like and they don't succeed like they might be okay games but it's just like they, it was a game that was built for long-term success and it just mm-hmm. didn't stick and it's it's you know you look like a destiny even destiny struggle fucking it's bungee and they they struggled oh, really yeah. bad at the beginning and i mean they're, they definitely have got it back on track now but it's like it, it took a long time to get destiny where it is look at division same thing look at anthem fucking rainbow six thing. siege uh, really uh struggled as well i know that when it first released yeah, like, and they, you also can talk about big yep. old flops say like anthem i mean that was definitely a big one yeah, so it's like it's definitely, and these aren't like, like you said they go on for on forever, which sounds great. That sounds like something you you know you'd want. Like I love having Madden as a as a, like my backup game to always go to all year round till the new one comes out. Like there's definitely a, a, like you can have those kind of games, but like I have one that's my backup game. I don't have five or six. You know I'm not being pulled in multiple gener- uh, multiple you know, directions. And you know I mean it helps because I mean I, we are definitely more like, uh, especially me I'm more like uh, a story g- gamer. Like I love like more linear games. That's why. I, definitely this generation turned more into like a playstation guy because of the, i love their their uh exclusives that they have they draw more, more towards me and like there's definitely a, there, there's room for those big games to have but they just gotta be more few and far between than what they are like not everybody can do them kind of thing and that's something that was been an issue for a long time in gaming and we've proven that like you can release those smaller games like you know 40 dollar but like look at uncharted lost legacy of ratchet and clank uh you know, like the release knows like there's even that um not that not, not that Ellen. What's the uh, other uh, the Xbox uh, fucking zombie game? The Capcom game. Dead Rising. Um, Dead Rising, like they did the, the like the DLC like well expansion thing, and that was really popular. Like there is definitely a market to have these. Like there, you know, uh, there's definitely. I mean, it's it's hard because like you look at like the majority of like gamers out there, like that's where they go is online gaming and games of service and shit like that. But you know, it's like. They're only gonna pick up. They're, they're gonna only pick so many, and they're gonna jump back in when the new content drops, and they're gonna move on to something else. But it's just it's it's like I said, it's not sustainable. And like, I would, I don't want the price to go up for gaming. I understand if it had to go up ten bucks, eventually, like I think everybody would get that. I mean, we I'd be a little upset about it, but um, they have found ways to make us pay extra for games like with like the deluxe version for seventy, or the get it three days early for eighty, yeah. or. Buy the ultimate ed- edition for a hundred. Like they they find ways to get us to pay the extra, but um, I don't know. I, I mean, I'd be all bored over this personally because there's so many games like I feel like I completely just don't even play. They, like that uh, look cool to me, but it's like I'm not gonna play that. Or like the last like some of the Assassin's Creed games where it's like uh, like a lot of open world games. Like I got into, but eventually I like I'm, I get burnt out. I'm like, okay, I'm just ready to finish this game now. It's like Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Uh, I was having a blast. I'm just like. I just want to get like the last like five six hours. I'm just like I just just want to, I'm just rushing through this game to get over with because I'm like I'm ready to see the end of this. Right. So I look at um, you know Saints Row games like they're fun for a while, but then like you just like I just want this game exactly to get over it grades on you after a while, I, especially uh, Saints Row Four. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh yeah, especially Saints Row Four. That one Saints Row Three was a blast. Oh no shit. Local. And there's definitely there's always examples that stick out that like you can argue like well these, look at how these ones did. I mean there's always arguments to it. I understand, but. You look, you know, like I said, it's just there's so many fucking. You look at, I mean, I was, I've been watching a lot of these, uh, like these, like the Gorilla Game Expo and the New Game Plus uh, Expo and shit like that. Like all like these indie game events, like since E3 is all, you know, everything being weird this summer, where it's like all these like smaller indie games are like being shown off at these. And I'm just like watching, I watch like a few of them and I'm just like, it's like, it's like, man, like, even the indie game has kind of lost like that creative spark it felt like it had 10 years ago, you know, eight years ago, where it's like, it seemed like, you get three or four brilliant fucking indie games a year that just stood out. Right. And like the summer of arcade stuff was awesome. Like limbo and braid and fucking all that. Like just so many fucking awesome castle crashers, just great smaller indie games. That yeah. came out. And it's like, even they lost a spark where it's like, you watch them. It's like, it's just trailer after trailer after trailer of like it's the same six different types of games. It's like over and over again. So it's like, all right, it's, uh, this one's a fucking, um, once more, you, you die and you replay, die and replay. You get a little better every time. Uh, I forget what those, what those ones are called. I don't like them, though. But it's like I've seen, like, three or four, like, Doom clones. I've seen so many fucking, like, artsy games where it's like, I mean, for a long time, like, I admittedly, like, I, I bought games just because the art style looked cool. And it's like in that I've been burnt a lot, especially this generation. 
um, on that. And it's like you see in like so many like limbo knockoffs. You see, and that's always gonna be the case. That's the case in everything in life. You look anything like football. Somebody does really well with the in in this offensive play style. Fucking everybody else two years from now is doing that. that that's same very play true. Style. Um, <laughs> it's just. It's just the way of life things go. I mean, business especially. Um, and there's nothing wrong with like having longer games. If you have a story to tell, like Last of Us, I um, I beat that and it took me about 24 hours. If there's, I'm, I'm, there's so much shit I, I missed out on. Um, you look at like a God of War. You look at fucking uh, Pokemon. You look at certain like certain game like RPGs. Like th- that's they're, that's how right. they're supposed to be. Big open worlds. Like there's definitely art. Like you can have those. Um, but like Final Fantasy. Seven. It took me like almost forty hours. But I had an awesome story to tell, and I, you know, and if you have that, that's fine. You have a great story you want to tell, that's fine. But it's like, yeah, to see like so many of these, like you said, games that take five, six years to come out, and to come out, and it's like, you know, for every Rainbow Six Siege out there, like they turn it around, there's fifty of them that didn't. Yeah. You know? um, and we we always talk about oh Rainbow Six. We hear about Anthem's trying to make a comeback. It's like we always bring up oh Rainbow Six that. Siege did it, or um, Destiny did it, or this did it, or that did it, but it's like Final Fantasy fourteen did it, but it's just like, okay, but how many games like tried to do it and failed and we just forgot about <laughs> that, that did it, you know? That didn't do it. So, I don't know. That, I don't know. And uh, like like I said, I, I, there's like I said, I would love it if we kind of came on the ground. Like, there's definitely you know, room to have these games, but it's just, I think so many people just, it's mainly the big companies you look at too, but um but she saw like a smaller company that tried to like, okay, this is the hot thing to do, and they try to fight with the big guys and they just lose, even when the big guys aren't doing it well either. But uh, I don't know. That's that's for all I have to say on it. Fifteen minutes later, Gable, anything you want to say for? Oh no, that's good. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Well, we are going to move on to what we've been playing. Gables, uh, do you want to? Start I'll start this start? time. Okay. So to continue on earlier from what I said in the show, I have been playing predominantly Xbox stuff. So. Mm-hmm. To start things off, I did play through the entire campaign of Halo 4. Now, this game, nice. in and of itself, I avoided back in the day. It released during the time where I completely moved all of my stuff from 360 to PS3, and thus I decided just to go from uh, PS3 forward to the end of that generation because, for one, after the whole Sony security lockout fiasco with Geohot and all that other shit from back then... I decided just to go full in with a PlayStation 3 because, hey, you know what? Show a little bit of support, do this, do that, and stuff. So Halo 4 became a casualty of that. And honestly, when that game was announced and revealed for the first time, I'm like, yeah, this. I had my own other like preconceptions. So I was like, how are they going to top Halo 3? This and that. Fast forward up to 2020, and I'm finally getting a chance to play Halo 4 as a part of the Master Chief Collection. It's the very last game that I played through the Master Chief Collection <laughs> as I blaze through all of those games now. But uh, there are a few things I can say about this game. One, one, this is definitely the weakest campaign inside the entire franchise, in my honest opinion. There are some inconsistencies. I did not like the over-dramatization with a lot of the different characters I didn't care about. The whole focus really is upon Master Chief and Cortana through various story elements. It sounds really weird to hear Master Chief speak a lot, honestly, as opposed to him just saying a few lines in the other Halo games. But uh, Cortana, quintessentially, you're going through this entire game fighting against, Pro- like, Prometheans, Quinn of itself, like... So the entire purpose of this campaign is you're going through to this separate planet whatsoever. You're de- you're defeating this forerunner sort of warrior called the Didac. And uh, you're facing these off against these creatures called the Prometheans, which turn out to be humans that have been evolved through certain Prothean, Promethean stuff. That's pretty much what uh, I got from the gist about. There's this whole different type of arc in regards to Cortana sort of degrading because uh, the life expectancy of an AI and stuff is like nine, eight or nine years or something of that sort. So she's going haywire. She's doing a lot of erratic things in regards to that stuff. But uh, campaign aside, the gameplay of it, the gameplay of it was all right. It wasn't bad, but it felt like the Prometheans were just glorified bullet sponges. 
there were definitely a lot of random enemies I found more annoying. And there was these different little type of Surbot stuff that uh, some of the uh, the warrior type of Prometheans would launch that would immediately just target you, like seeking like lasers and this and that of that. Yeah, it got rather annoying really quick, especially when I tried to use the same type of uh, strategy I played in the other Halo games where, hey, you know what, I can go through... I could go through on the easy mode of the campaign and stuff and do this and that and uh, gun down whatever type of thing and then I'll just be good, you know? No. No. You you quite literally have to go through and just unload I could you not round after round after certain enemies because you have to target specific weak points. You gotta go through. You are shifting weapons at a faster rate, it felt like. But uh, by the end of the game, by the end of that campaign, I thought it was all right. It wasn't like a bad Halo game. The it was sort of anticlimactic because the whole big bad of that entire game. The last cutscene, he falls into a fucking like pit. <laughs> you don't really fight him at all. But uh, that launched that launched the events of a Halo Five Guardians. That's the other game. The last Halo game. I've played through, and it's a game that I never even played before. Hmm. So, I heard a couple things about Halo 5 Guardians over the past few years. More so about its advertising. Back in the day, it was advertised heavily that it was Spartan Locke against Master Chief. And from what it made it sound like, you were going to be playing predominantly as... Master Chief going through facing off against Spartan Locke, and it's like a back and forth sort of thing. Well, inside the actual game itself, that doesn't happen. Quintessentially, there's two teams there's Red Team and there's Blue Team. Red Team comprises of Spartan Locke, where you spend quite literally 80% of the game playing as him and his team, one of which is uh, an old character from Halo 3 ODST, the one that. Uh, Nathan Fillion plays Buck. And quite honestly, he's one of the best characters. And he's actually one of the best voice characters in this whole game. I got to admit. He's just Nathan Fillion's just the piece no of shit. Everything, it, it doesn't matter like it doesn't matter whether he's like playing like a doctor or something or he's playing like a space cowboy or a space marine or whatever the hell. The whole sci-fi setting with Nathan Fillion is just in and of itself good in my honest opinion. But uh the gameplay felt solid. I definitely liked Halo 5 Guardians as a whole better than Halo 4. The weapons felt better. It felt like I wasn't wasting a lot of rounds predominantly. I noticed immediately there was an improvement upon a, a Promethean weapon type of upgrade through the bolt action like pistol as regard to, say, Halo 4, where the, the ones in Halo 5 actually go through and they seek out the opponent as opposed to just randomly just uh, going off against the corner or wherever the hell. They weren't targeting anything. So they definitely... 343 Studios definitely improved the gameplay, the gunplay, the overall look of it. The look of Halo 5 Guardians looks pretty gorgeous, in my honest opinion. Not so much, like, too shiny or too weird-looking like in Halo 4. Because that type of art style was a little bit polarizing, in my honest opinion. But... Uh, it was interesting going through that main campaign because, like I was saying before, you play 80% of it as Spartan Locke following after Master Chief and Blue Team, which if you go into this game not knowing anything about the back history of, say, Halo through reading the books, reading the source materials of anything, you're going to be completely lost. And quite honestly, that was a certain point where I was lost because they make references to Master Chief and Blue Team and all the other ones in his team are the ones he grew up with in terms of being kids. I'm like, where the hell, what the hell is this coming from all of a sudden? And uh, I like that little detail, but at the same time, it would have been much more of a interesting way to introduce who these characters were instead of just randomly, oh, these are just people who you grew up fighting with, you know? Like, <laughs> fighting with as a group. And somehow Cortana knows all of them. But, uh, well, we're not going to explain anything to you because we expect you to read all, <laughs> we expect you to read all these Raiders mm -hmm. novels. Uh, but uh, I loved how the game looked I love how fluid the combat felt it felt reminiscent of classic Halo games 
the whole aspect of the whole Promethean enemy subtype in comparison to say the Covenant and the Flood, I thought was well well done in some regards, but I kind of felt like they were sort of placeholders for something else. Now, yeah, that's another thing. The Covenant inside of Halo 5 Guardians, it, it's kind of like a shell of what it once was, and there were some aspects of it where I'm thinking, why the hell am I fighting elites and grunts? Because it already was established inside of Halo 2, that campaign, to where the Covenant tossed out the elites because of uh, the whole aspect of like the Arbiter and stuff doing whatever and stuff inside of uh, letting the first Halo ring get destroyed or some shit like that. I'm just trying to remember key story points. But uh, instead of a story sense, it didn't make sense where you would have elites fighting inside of the Covenant. You know, instead of, like, say, the Brutes, because the Brutes were predominant inside of Halo 2, Halo 3. Hell, Halo 2 predominantly because of the whole end boss thing with Tartarus and stuff, but... <clears throat> Honestly, I feel like that this game is really fun, and it gets a lot of flack that I don't believe it deserves in terms of the quality of the game itself. It's one of those games where I felt the advertising of it really hurt the game in and of itself. Because I remember back then people thought they were that people were lied to in regards to the advertising. It definitely felt like it was a false advertising type of thing back then. Because here you're presented where, hey, it's Master Chief versus Spartan Locke, you know? It's like, oh, one side's going rogue, the other side's right there. You gotta pick a side, this and that. But quintessentially, you, you play as both throughout this entire game. 80% of it Locke, but the ones with Master Chief and all the other stuff, they were fairly interesting as well. But there were certain parts in the story where it's like, why am I controlling Spartan Locke? Well, I could be just where I could be doing something more interesting as Master Chief <laughs> with his crew and yeah. stuff. But honestly, I feel like Halo 5 Guardians in a whole is not a bad game. If I had to rate the remaining Halo games that I've played through, Halo 4, I would give a 7. The gameplay was okay. Story, story elements were eh, mixed. But uh, for Halo 5 Guardians, I'd actually give it like an 8. Maybe like an 8.5. Because I enjoyed my time with it. I mm -hmm. thought it was looked nice. I thought it definitely scratched that itch. To where I didn't feel like it was a bad game. But I liked a lot of what I played. And the whole ending of the game. Where it kind of sets up the next game. To where, hey, Cortana's probably going to be the main enemy of this entire game. Because because of a story element that happens somehow Cortana gets healed in regards to the whole degenerization of uh she quintessentially she's an AI that can't die she pretty much solved this like re this main flaw so she pretty much has like immortality as an AI <laughs> oh great that's yeah exactly I mean. the point and all these other AIs are joining her and uh, the ending part of Halo 5 Guardians is quite literally Cortana sparking through and just severing a lot of the ties of uh, a lot of the electric stuff inside of not, no just all the computer stuff all the computer programs and whatsoever on earth and all the other places so i'm kind of interested more so in halo infinite because i wonder if it's going to be more of what master chief and all the other all the other players involved are going to do because the last time you leave them was in like san helios or some of that with uh, the Arbiter, Master Chief, Spartan Locke, and all the other stuff. So yeah, I'm more interested now in playing Halo Infinite than I was six months ago, and I, <laughs> I think that's, nice. I think that's a major win-win, in my personal opinion. I've grown a lot. I have grown a lot more appreciative of the Halo franchise as a whole through going through all of the games all in a row. I did not anticipate this. It was something that I've craved for a long while. It was random like one day i'm inside walmart say hey it's the master chief collection i have an urge to play halo and all of a sudden i play through the entirety of the series who the fuck does that <laughs> yeah now he's gonna play halo wars uh, i could but at the yeah. same time nah. no nah. i do not do well with rts games that much <laughs> but yeah. uh there is one more game i did play and that was skate three <laughs> oh, no, to be perfectly honest 
I thought it was I thought it was pretty funny that I go from playing all these first person shooters. You know, I need to play something different. Then I crack open Skate Three and I start playing the game a lot. And I was up until like almost three in the morning, like the previous night playing the Skate Three. And before even we started the Skype call and stuff, I went through and uh, completed the main task, the main objective of the career mode, which was getting over a million board sponsorship, like a million like board sales. That's the whole entire point of Skate 3, is to <laughs> go do these tasks, right, for your team, take these photo ops, do these competitions for Vert and Street, do all these random, like, uh, own these spots or own this and own that. But the whole purpose of this entire game and the story mode is to make sure your team and your board brand sells a million decks. I did that <laughs> in three days, roughly, of gameplay. Oh, Jesus. And quite honestly, in of itself, I liked a lot of the gameplay of Skate 3. I definitely did feel nostalgic and feel really good about going through the whole Hollow Meat stuff again. I remember that being one of my favorite aspects of Skate 3 back when I played through it originally on the PlayStation 3. After all that was done, I went through a whole bunch of the street and the vert stuff. I started challenging pro after pro. But at the same time, there is no concrete ending to Skate 3. <laughs> there really isn't. Once you get over a million decks, it goes to this cutscene, right? To where you have all the other skaters are in line waiting for the unveiling of the freaking skate video that uh, my board brand had got through in uh, made and stuff. And you know what I called my team? I called my team Team Tunnel Vision. <laughs> no, I went with Team Hell No on the PS3 version. And so for this one, oh, I nice. went through and just Team Tunnel Vision. And what's hilarious about it, there's a it was an icon with a pair of freaking prescription glasses. <laughs> <laughs> and I just did just like random like generic fucking skater characters and this and that. I mean, the creative characters a lot more much more like to be desired upon it. I did have some fun with Skate 3. I definitely felt more frustrated playing through the game now than I did back then because getting used to the fucking controls and the physics of that game is a pain in the ass. It is not as easy and fluid as Tony Hawk. <laughs> That's something I had forgotten about it. But uh, I did enjoy playing it. I may play a little bit more of it, but... Uh, because the main objective stuff has already been done, I'm probably going to go on to something else, which I have no fucking clue. So that's all I've been playing. <laughs> okay. Cool, man. Um, so speaking of false advertising, I've been playing... I beat uh, Last of Us <laughs> um, Segway. Uh, minor, yeah. <laughs> Segway, yeah. Um, no. Uh, so I finished up last night, uh, Last of Part 2. I've been playing it like a madman the past week. Um, took me about, it was like, my save was like 23 and a half okay. hours by the time I was done with it. And I, I mean, I, I didn't really skip over anything. I tried to find everything and like there was, I know it was like sections I missed, um, cause there's some open world, not really open world, but there's open sections that you can go into and find like, you know, safes or extra gear or more like a little side content to, to find like, but it's nothing crazy, but, um, I don't know how people, some people said it took them like 40 hours to beat. I don't know if the fuck that's possible, but um, yeah. So I, I finished it up last night. La last week we're going to talk about, I was about eight hours in and um, fuck man, this game is so hard to talk. I almost said something that was spoiled. <laughs> uh, that, that was, it's a major spoiler. Like this game is fucking just chock full of spoilers. There's so many things that they just completely don't tell you about. Like in the advertising, like just crazy things you don't think. Like when, when I started this game, like, going in there with the main bad guys and stuff in this game where I'm just like, I'm on this mission where like, I want, cannot wait to kill all these people. Like I am so on board to like killing every single one of these. And it's just like, I'm, like you're on like, Ellie's just like in this blind rage and you just like, you can't wait to like, you want to, you want to get revenge for things that happened in this game. And like somewhere in the middle, like it switches it where it's it, this whole game, like the, I, you, you're playing this game and like it's so black and white like and somewhere in this game like it turns to gray. uh gray 
you know it's just like wait okay what and it's like there was a good section in the middle there for like three hours i'm just like all right i know what you're doing i don't like it i don't want to do this this sounds not fun at all and it's just like halfway through that section like it my opinion completely changed where i'm just like i am completely on board with everything that's going on in this game now like and like but you're still like you're still torn and like my heart still is like my brain's still torn on like what what like there's been a big uh backlash on these characters and the things they do and say and what happens in the story where it's like they wouldn't act like this or i don't like agree with what they did but it's just like I, don't know, I love the idea of like where you, so many games you know nowadays in the last decade where it's like it's like you choose your own adventure route and it's just like it's you know it's like i love the fact that they like they made you stick to like this and you have to do these things whether you're uncomfortable you like it or not like as uncomfortable as i was in so many uh, parts of this game where it's like i had a they, they made me push the button to do something terrible or to do something i didn't I agree with but like you went along with the ride and they didn't nothing was wasted in this game where like you see so many times in like movies and TV shows where like, uh, like to get like uh get some fans talking on Twitter or to get a bump in the ratings, like they'll do some drastic in the, in the thing. But like, it's like the, they didn't really have like a, a follow up to it. There wasn't a point to it in, in that game or in the movie or the TV show. And in this game, it's just like everything, like nothing was wasted. Like you did, like they do some crazy shit in this game with the characters and with when the development of some of these new characters, the new characters they have and the development of the old characters that we know. And it's like nothing, and it always felt like the, the follow up behind it made sense to me where it's just like, I mean, I maybe didn't like it, but you can see why they, why they felt that way. And I love that. I love the fact that like they nailed it. Like it's so hard to do where it's like some of the shit they do in this game and they fucking like they nailed it and they didn't waste it. They, they brought a good point to it. They created some new great characters and it's like, they totally just like, I think the point of the game is like to make you, f to make you feel like in your heart, like, you know, it's like, I don't know how to feel right now. Like, and I think that's what they want you to do. They want, or maybe, I don't know, maybe they want you to pick a side uh, to like or pick, or pick a feeling to have. And it's like, I, I don't have one. And when I listen to people talk about it, they don't have um, that, that, that feeling either. Like no one really can pick, uh, you know, wh how to feel about some of the shit that happens, even including the ending where it's just like, the, I was just wanting this game to be over with seven eight hours before it was over with was like i don't want to do this anymore it's like i don't like you know i don't like the decisions that they're making but i'm still like but it's not like i don't hate it you know it's like you don't like it from like because you love these characters so much not that you hate it because you don't like the, the what the what the writers did you know it's like you love these characters so much you don't like the things they're doing or you don't like where the story's going but you don't hate it because it's bad you just don't like it because it's good it's great writing but you don't like you hate to see these characters that you love so much do these awful things. And, um, yeah, it's just, I, that's all like throughout this entire game. That's how I felt, especially the last like section, like the last the three hours were the hardest ones to play, uh, for me by far. Um, yeah, it's truly probably the greatest. It's not the most fun game at all. And like Courtney kept asking me, he's like, are you having fun playing this game? And I'm like, no, no, I'm not. I'm not having fun with this game because it's like it's just it's awful. It's dreadful because of like the things you do in this game. Like it's just what hard I'm interested in, to do. What I'm it's interested hard. more is like uh, like maybe Courtney's point of view and stuff. I, obviously, she's watched certain parts of this game. Like watched part of the, yeah, she watched the, playing it. Yeah, yeah, she watched a few hours. She didn't see like some of the crazy shit towards the end oh. though. Or she saw some. And she saw the brutality of this fucking game. Where she's like, she looked at me. She's like, Tyler. What the fuck is going on right now? Where it's like one girl's like arm just gets fucking smashed oh. with a hammer, and just like how like you know how realistic these games are. Where it's like people always like see, people keep saying this game is more brutal than the first one, and I don't think that's the case. I think just graphics are so much better than what we were in 2013 when this game came out. Where it's like we've had not only a full generation, okay. we've we've gone from the from the end of PS3 to the end of PS4. We've also had a minor jump with the PS4 Pro in there as well true you know so it's even more a little more powerful and yeah um fuck man like it's like i said it's like it's probably the the greatest video game experience i've ever had where it's just like i've never been like like i've been i've been engrossed in games and like i've been like stuck on like oh man i can't wait to go home and play this game but it's more like i'm enjoying i'm having fun playing this game but it's like me it's like it's just like it's getting like hooked on like a really great like series on like Netflix or something, and that we're like I just want to sit down and like poop sock this entire <laughs> fucking thing, 
because I wanted I got to know what happens next. And it's like I don't like you know I, I want to know where these stories go and I want to know uh, what these characters do and what happens in the end because it's like I'm so fascinated I'm so torn I'm like maybe they'll give me the easy black and white answer and or maybe they'll you know they'll explain away or maybe the thing uh, that I want to happen happens and it's like you know, and it's like was the good and the bad it's kind of, it's kind of like the like the early days of Game of Thrones where it's like the first six seasons are like some of the greatest television you ever see and it's like you never like every episode like you enjoyed but it was also that it's like that constant sense of dread where it's like every scene a character you love and it's like all right fucking Tyrion's here oh man what if Tyrion dies in this scene like what if something like at any point in time like you know Peter Dinklage is dead you know <laughs> it's like you, you felt that yeah and, and that and that and that in that show and it's like you feel that in every scene with like uh with with Last of Us 2 where it's like at any point in time like anything can happen uh in, in a great way um yeah, and just I guess I should talk about like the gameplay itself is so much better too. I think but like a lot of people always talk knock on Naughty Dog with the gameplay style, which I enjoy the, that kind of like that Gears of War style. I think it's fun. Like I love the Uncharted games; they're fun to play through. Uh, playing through Last of Us One earlier this month um, was a little rough because you know it's a seven-year-old game at this point, and uh, you going back and you play like Uncharted Four and you see what games right. progress also as well. But it's like Uncharted Four is like leaps and bounds better than three uh, Uncharted Three and Last of Us. Um, the play. I can agree with that. And you look at like, and and like you look at like where Last Legacy went with with the with the series as well, where like they took some big jumps. You look, you see like every game that Naughty Dog makes, they progress like their overall the way games play themselves like they drastically get better. And they take minor things they made and other things and make them big things in the next game. Um, and I feel like. The gameplay is better, like the because my big, my biggest issue with the first one was like the weapon sway, like you like constantly like your your, your uh, reticles constantly swaying, and it's still a case in this game, but it's not as bad. But it's also like it, it in a weird way. I don't want to make it make sense like I'm making excuses, but it's like it makes sense because you're not some like badass soldier dude like in Call of Duty or Gears of War, like like you're you're a human just trying to survive in this shitty apocalypse world, and um, so it, it kind of makes sense that way. It's frustrating at times for sure when you're trying to get a fucking headshot and you're sneaking around because you can get like you put a silencer on your pistol and you fucking miss or you shoot him in the, sh- the, sh- the shoulder you're like fuck now I got 20 guys <laughs> coming after me but um I don't know I, I feel like everything they did like has been like a great upgrade on where Last of Us 1 was where it's like the um the amount of upgrades you can do to your weapons is tr- drastically better the uh the medicine there's so much more medicine to find now where it's like there's so few and far between before and like the I mean the upgrades you did were always nice but there's like so many more like sc- upgrades you can do in this game i think there's like 30 you can find in this game for, for ellie and um you know it's just and they they add so many different things and like the the different more things the different things you can craft like you can create explosive arrows and shit like that or like i said you can put the silencer on your pistol um the smoke bombs the trap mines shit like that it's like it's all like so much better and the way everything works is so much better it's more fluid it's more fun to play like i felt like Everything I was trying to do worked well. Or like I felt sometimes in like Last of Us Part One, I was like it was kind of clumsy and like I would like over exaggerate the movements I wanted to make. Um, you know, just but that was because I was playing at the time. I didn't feel that way, but now seven years later, I felt that way. And it's like in this one, it just felt like everything I wanted to do, I did. Um, not to say that I fucking was awesome at stealth because I'm always like. I'm going to pick up, I could probably pick up four or five of these guys and eventually then we get caught by this guy for sure. There's no way I'm going to get around him. So then it's like, I'm going to turn this to a firefighter, but you just pick up as many as you can before it turns that fight. But, um, I just, I felt like the, the game, the gameplay itself has improved drastically. Uh, I'm not going to, it's not Call of Duty. It's not Destiny. It's not Gears. But I think for what this game, what it needs, I think it'd be off if it was those things or if it felt tight and it felt like fluid and it felt like it was like pitch perfect. You know, it's like, I think it makes it feel real um, in Last of Us, like the shooting mechanics do, especially, and it's the way you sneak around um, does, but uh, yeah, um, fuck man, this is, uh, 2020 is going to be a hard year for, I mean, it's a hard year in just general, but for a video game standpoint, like, we, we, when we go back and we talk about 2019, it was kind of a, a down year, and we talk about all the time, we talk about a lot, especially me, um, but I just look at 2020, I'm like, you know, I thought, okay, you know, this this probably be one of the best games of the year, and it's like it definitely, it's it's probably is the best game of the year right now for me. Um, but yeah, I, I this is like one of those game of the generation type of games, you know, to me. Um, game, this is like 
I mean, it's 2020, but it's like this is one of those things where I feel like when we do game of the decade uh, for 20 for the, the 20s, like this will be on a lot of people's list still. Kind of like Mass Effect 2 was, um, or the original Last of Us was, you know, for the last generation or last decade. Like this could be one of those games. Like it's gonna be, it's. It's a game that's not for everybody. I like. I understand if you don't like, like I hate some of the hate that's out there for this game for no reason because of some of the decisions they make. Uh, like you know, these people just rage quit, and this is like some I, I I like I've heard people like I have friends that like they got to like a certain part in the game and they hated where the characters were going to so quit playing. I'm like, no, you gotta go because like you gotta keep going because like that's like the follow up is what makes this game so great in some of these moments, and um, yeah. Um, I'm rambling. I'm sorry, but uh, this it's a it's a fucking it's a brilliant game, uh, and you and I we talked about because you like you said uh, about a month ago you ended up getting the spoilers. You looked up the spoilers for it, and I was curious what you knew because I've heard from a lot of people like and listen to spoiler cast and looking online and people saying it's like man I thought I knew everything and I didn't or like I what I heard was actually wrong or you know I I, I assumed this but this actually happened kind of stuff like they heard little little pieces of the stuff but they didn't. And they just assumed this, but it was, you know, they assumed A, but it was it was Z kind of shit. So, um, yeah, it's brilliant game. Uh, it's one of those games where, like if you you gotta keep playing it. Like I like there's there's definitely moments where you, I I hate the things I have to do, but it's like it's all worth it from the end. And it's like I like I've been an emotional wreck because of like I want to know what happens. I want to know what happens with these characters. I'm so tense on what's gonna happen with them. And it's like even today after or last night after beating it and like last night beating it, sit down, just thinking about it, um, going online finally for like the first time in like two months and like not having like have anxiety about like seeing spoilers about shit or um, like and there's just, some good memes you know, on it though. Think, <laughs> is there? I'm gonna have to go look at these memes. Uh, <laughs> look but, them up, man. They're gonna be fun. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna look them up. But uh, yeah, it's. It's a, it's a brilliant and there was a Pearl Jam song in there I didn't know that was like they keep there's this one song they always go back to it's a Future Days by Pearl Jam song that they always go back to and I didn't realize until after I beat the game I was talking to Wes on our talk ship group and he's like you know that's a uh, Pearl Jam song and I'm like huh? the only thing I recognize okay and I listen to it the only thing I recognize one of the songs go ahead, sorry. was like from AHA you know Take On Me <laughs> oh my god <laughs> a random but, um, song just right in the midst of everything <laughs> Yeah. Um, but, uh, man. Yeah. Um, I, I was like emotional wreck at that, the, at the last scenes, the last like 10 minutes, immediately fucking tears just strolling down my face. And then the, even the credits, there's like songs they play that just hit you on a different level. Um, but, uh, and just, yeah, it's just, uh, it was an emotional wreck. Like, I, you know, just finally be done with it. Um, you know, like, I love it. I'm so sad it's over because I've waited for this for, you know, seven years, four years since they announced it. Um, you know, it's, I, it, you, people always talk about, like, and I said the same thing. I didn't want a sequel to Last, uh, Last of Us Part 1. Um, but I definitely don't want a sequel to Last Like, it, it just, it this needs to be it. Like, the story that they told here is brilliant. Like, I, I say that if they, if they they announced Last of Us Part 3 in five years, I'd be like, fuck yeah, let's do it. But, um it's just like, you know, it's like they don't need it. Like they made a masterpiece. It's like, I hope they don't like, it's like with the whole Nathan Drake story, it's like they did a masterpiece. And like, I hope like that character is done. Like, I don't even want prequels for Nathan Drake. I'll mi- I miss the shit out of Nathan Drake, but I don't, I don't want them to fuck it up. You know, I don't want that star Wars thing. I don't want game of Thrones season seven and eight. I don't want the more like, I don't want, I'd rather have not enough than too much, you know, mm-hmm. kind of thing. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just ready to say goodbye to like last of us. And this is a game. I don't think I'll ever play again. Like I just don't got it in me to play. Like <laughs> I, I felt it that way with last of us. I'm like, man, I was like, I was just didn't want to play through this game again, but it's like going through like the first chunk of that game again. And like, cause like you have those emotions that you feel like you're on board with like the story and like where like you're going with this. And it's like, they totally flip it on its head, you know? Uh, in the latter part of the game with what happens and it's just like I won't have those same emotions and feelings that I had before so it won't, it won't I mean the game's still fun to play but it's like the the story is not fun to watch and the things some of the things you do in the, in the big moments are just not fun to do so uh, it's a it's a game like 
I'll remember forever. Um, but it's one of those rare ones that you remember forever, but I'll never want to play again kind of thing. So, um, yeah. all in all, so that's, what is the rating that you would give this game? Who, um, we're doing like a 10? Yeah, we're doing a 10 scale. Okay, can I, can I do half Yeah. Okay. Fuck. Can I do a 100 point oh scale? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I thought about it. I want to do a 100 point scale. Can I do a 100 point scale? Dude, if you want to do a 100 point scale, go ahead. Okay. Uh, whew, fuck, that's a good question. That's a good question. That's good. 100. You're going to give it 100? No, okay. 100. Just because, like, I mean, you, there's things you can knock. Like I said, like the things they make you do is my biggest. It's not even a complaint. It's just the things I didn't like about the game. But it's like, like I said, I didn't like it because it was bad. I didn't like it because it was like they made you love the things in this game so much that you didn't want to do these terrible things to things you love or things you like or whatever. You already didn't agree with like the things they were doing kind of thing. But yeah, this is to me for what this game is, it is perfect. Like I said, there's, there's, I don't think there will be a better story than ever than Last of Us Part Two, ever, or maybe Last of Us in general because it's Last of Us Part One and was probably one of my two or three favorite stories in gaming ever, um, and this definitely uh, added on to it. And I guess uh, Neil Druckmann, who's like the director and one of the main writers of the, of the game, said like, "There's a reason this is called Part Two, not just Last of Us Two. We're like, this is the second half of that story." And I know they said like they don't know what they're going to do next. They might make Last of Us Part. They might make a Last of Us Three. And who knows? They have different characters. Me, uh, I, 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 if they did say do a Last of Us with different characters, I'd probably be on board with that. But for the story with these characters, it needs to be over. Um, but like I said, for what they're, I feel they're going for, and what I wanted this game to be, hundred out of hundred, um, for sure. I don't know why I made you make me make let me argue for a hundred point scale when I could attack, could give it a ten out of ten, <laughs> but I did. Um, can we do a one point scale? Oh can we do a one point scale. It's a one. It's a one. It's a one. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad, but it's a one. Uh, yeah, but um, yeah, that's that's all I'm playing. Uh, I jump, I, I jump back in Resident Evil Three after I beat it because I needed a a light fun game to play, you know, Gables. Uh, <laughs> a light so. fun game, and all of a sudden you're playing another survival horror game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just it's kind of funny playing this. Like this, like it's just like this. It's all meaningless after this. Like you just I'm playing. I'm like I just. Like it was funny because I'm, I'm doing all the like the trying to do because you know it's a zombie game and Last of Us. So yeah, you go, the, you get out of this world. like big old like elaborate ordeal and relationship with Last of Us Part Two, and all of a sudden you go from the, like the rebound game in Resident Evil Three. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a great way to put it. Resident Evil Three is my rebound <laughs> for Last of Us Part Two. Uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, the goddamn, I'm, I'm, I'm chased around by the nemesis. I'm like, fuck you, dude. <laughs> Like, do you know what I've been through? Do you know what I'm going through right now? You don't know. You don't understand. You ain't shit, dog. Um, that's, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be uh, interesting. Like, it's, it's uh, I, I, I'm feeling emotions still right now that I haven't felt for a very long time from media. And it's like, really, I mean, probably since Avengers Endgame, like, where I felt that, like, uh, like I've had emotions, like, like, that stick with you for, you know, more than just a day type of thing or more than just like the few hours after you're done with it or like a TV show way a TV show ends like that wasn't hatred like Game of Thrones or Dexter where I was like legitimately pissed off <laughs> over. like I was just mad because they were so terrible kind of things but um like you were so it was so well told kind of shit where it's like it, the payoff was was great kind of thing um but yeah um I don't give there's anything you want to ask or talk about before we uh, nah, get out of here I'm good okay well um thank you guys so much for listening uh, this was, uh, oh, it was episode 369, so it's our Little John and these side boys <laughs> uh, episode, so uh, damn near fine. Um, let me check to you one more time. Uh, but anyways, uh, we're going to get low and get on out of here. Uh, so thank you guys so much for listening. I was host, I was tight. Oh, wait, no, I forgot to do the rigmarole. Oh, uh, if you want to hear more from us, we are on Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, Spotify. We have a Facebook page and group. Um, go to all those places, look up Drunk Dash's podcast, Drunk Dash Nerds, um, Drunk Nerds, whatever. You'll find us on there. Give us a follow, a like subscribe thumbs up comment uh review whatever five stars whatever you can do to help us out we really would appreciate it more of you guys to do that um more easy it is for people to find us and gets us more views so we appreciate it but until next time i was and i have been colonel gables so until next time everyone play some games have some fun but most importantly of all thank you for listening to another fun-filled episode of the drunk dash nerds podcast yeah gables 
Too <laughs> sweet, man. Bye, guys. See ya. Excuse me, you two beers there. Anyways, we're on iTunes now, so go on there, check us out, and if you like us, leave us a review, and we'll even shout you out, and Jack will send you his credit card number.